Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll talk about counting, which is also known as combinations and permutations, the, the nerdy word for counting. Um, so on the GRE, the principles that are usually tested as far as counting is concerned are pretty simple, as is the case with other topics on the GRE. Uh, it's just the trick is the, the, the some nuances that the GRE tests on. And, and there are very few things actually uh, the GRE test on. So you know, if, you, if you see all those types of examples, uh, you're pretty much good on counting. Uh, so counting is pretty simple. Usually GRE would ask you, uh, let's say you have a group of five people, you want to pick three people from that group, how many different combinations of three people uh, can you pick from that group? Okay. So it's basically talking about how many combinations, you know, that you can, that you can arrange a particular number of things. Right. So let's, the easiest way do this is by looking at a problem, right? Okay, so here we go. Here is a simple, straightforward counting problem. How many three-digit numbers are there? So three digit numbers, as an example, these are like, you know, 121, 141. So it's asking how many of these in total are there, right? Now you can say, okay, well, all the three digits numbers span from 100 to 999, right? Well, I can just count these numbers and you can do that. It's actually, uh, I would recommend you to do it in a question like this. And this comes out to be about 900 numbers. The way to count is this is you can see, okay, from 101 to 200, you have 100 numbers. So each, I guess, um, each set of these would have 100 numbers. And you would have nine of these, except that this last one, as 99. So you have nine of these, but the last one has 99, so this gives you 899. And there's one, since you didn't count the 100, right? So 899 gives you 900. Okay, so this works in a, in a question like this, where the counting was not that cumbersome. But there's a shortcut way to do it. And the shortcut way to do it is this, by looking at um, what you call slots. So here, since you're picking um, basically a three-digit number, so you have three slots representing each digit that you have to choose. Now for each digit, you have a particular number of options, so like for the hundred digit, um, you can get anything from one to nine, right? Any of these um, digits can go in here, right? But you can't, obviously you can't have zero, because if you have zero, then you have a two-digit number. So one to nine, for this slot, which gives you nine options for the first slot. Now, similarly for the second slot, you can have any number from zero to nine. So here we include zero also, since you can have a zero here and still have a three digit number. So in this case, you have 10 options. Uh, and for the third slot, similarly, you have 10 options, right? Now to get your total number of combinations possible, what you do simply is that you have a product of these three. So you get 900, right? So see how much time it saves you compared to do the counting manually. So this comes in handy many times when you have cumbersome counting problems. Now one thing to note here is that the order of things, in this case digits, is important, right? What I mean by here is that, let's say you have 123, that is a separate combination compared to 3, 2, 1, right? So the digits are same, it's 1, 2, and 3, but the way they are arranged are different, and obviously it gives you different number. So this rule applies when the order is important, okay? We'll see when the order is not important in an example in a minute, you do a modification of this rule, okay? All right, so let's, let's go on and look at the problem where the order it's not important. All right, so we're going to talk about order not important. Okay. 
Okay, so here is the example problem. Select a three member committee from a class of 20 students. All right, simple problem. Again, we have, if you select the three member committee, so the number of slots are three. All right. Now, let's say we select John, Adam, and Kate, right? All right. Is that different than selecting Kate, John, Adam? Well, it's actually the same, right? It doesn't matter who I select first. I'm just selecting a three-member committee. All the all the members of the committee are equal length. They're the same, you know, types of member. So, so nothing here. So the order here is not important. So when you have a problem like this, you can start off by having your same slots and same combination like the same option so the first slot will have 20 students you have a 20 student in all that you want to select from the second one would have 19 so this is important once you have selected 20 from this 20 you have selected one here right so you're left with 19. this was not important in the earlier problem because we were just you know taking digits and and digits could be repeated but here you can't repeat the same person so your option decreases by one for the second slot. And similarly for the third slot, your option decreases by 18. Okay. Now, since the order here is not important, what you have to do is you have to divide by the factorial of number of slots. Factorial, okay. I hope you remember this factorial sign. If you don't, we'll just do it quickly here. So, we have 20 times 19 times 18 divided by number of slots factorial. Number of slots is 3 and our factorial is here, right? Let's expand out the factorial. It's 3 times 2 times 1. I can basically cancel this and this. I get a 6 here. Sorry, I get a 3 here. Okay, and if I do the multiplication here, 20 times 19 times 3, like 1140. These are the total number of combinations possible. And it's like a three member committee from 20, 20, uh, 20 student class. Okay. So, so basically, the counting process simply is this the first step is prepare and fill slots, okay? And here, keep in mind what's happening with the reputation, okay? And second uh, principle is basically to determine if order is important. If order is important, you just prepare your slots, have your options, multiply it out. If order is not important, then you have to divide by the number of slots factorial um, that you uh, have. So again, the, the factorial is just, you know, if you have three factorial, you write it out like this, you know, you it's, it's basically a product from the number you have as a factorial till one. So you, um, just to, to review it quickly, if you have, let's say, 5 factorial, then you start by 5, you go to the next lower integer, which is 4, next lower 3, you go on to 1, and this product is basically what your factorial is. Alright. So let's do some example problems. Alright. So, a 3 stripe flag needs to be colored. Each stripe can be colored one of the five colors, red, blue, green, yellow, and white. Okay. However, no adjacent sides can have the same two colors. How many differently colored combination flags are possible? All right, so it's a basic, you have a three 
has striped flag that needs to be colored that just tells me you know it's basically a three slot uh, problem they say each stripe can be colored on five colors you have five options and all so so usually this is a simple part then what GRE would do it would provide some restriction that will limit the number of options that go so here the restriction is that no adjacent sides can have the same color okay so none of the two sides so let's say if this is red then this cannot be red okay so so these are the restrictions that the GRE will put in there to make the problem slightly that uh, the problem have a slight caveat in it okay so so all right let's fill in our options here for the first slot well, I have five colors. I can put any of these five colors. So I have five options, right? Now for the second slot, since I cannot have the same color next to the first stripe, my option has gone down by one. So now I have four options available. Okay. And similarly for the next slot, again, I cannot have the same color as in the second stripe. So my option has, options have reduced from five to four again. And just the product of that would give me uh, 5 times 4 times 4 gives me 80. Okay. Uh, now, so this this was a, the restriction basically reduced our option for the second slot and the third slot. Now, the other thing to note here was that the order is important, right? Okay. If I have a red, green, blue flag, that's different than having a red. Okay. So since the order was important, I didn't divide here by the factorial of number of slots available. Okay. So, so a simple problem in the end uh, with a slight caveat that you had to go 